Hello, and thank you. I'm James Jack, the head of business owners client segment for UBS Wealth Management USA. In honor of Women's History Month, I'm excited to kick off our Founders and Funders series for an important conversation with women entrepreneurs, focusing on how they built, exited, and supported successful businesses. Leading this month's Founders and Funders UBS conversation is our very own Jennifer Poblitz. Jennifer is our West Division Director and is extremely passionate about supporting women business leaders in their journeys. So we thought of no better person to start us off. So Jennifer, over to you. Thank you, James, and thanks to our viewers for joining us today for part one of our two-part dialogue with Lizanne Falsetto. I'm very excited for the conversation today with Lizanne. She's a celebrated CEO and founder of Think Thin. She's a health and wellness visionary, and she's the founder of the Holistic Success Network, which supports the next generation of entrepreneurs. In 2015, Lizanne sold Think Thin for more than $200 million. Since then, she's been working to support other women entrepreneurs and recently launched the Holistic Success Network, which is a professional community devoted to supporting early and mid-stage women founders. And separately and personally, Lizanne and I know each other from another organization we both belong to called YPO, Young Presidents Organization. So Lizanne, hello, and welcome to Founders and Funders. It's nice to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you too. It's nice to see you too. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk to you about your entrepreneurial journey. So let's jump right in with the first question. You were one of the first to enter the high protein bar business and you ultimately grew it, as I said earlier, to an incredibly successful exit of $200 million. Why did you start Think Thin and what do you think are the key steps you took to build such a sizable business, Lizanne? Jennifer, I started my business out of a personal need. I couldn't find food that I could eat on the go. And I wanted something that had protein and something that you know would give me energy. And so I decided to, to tear apart my grandmother's recipes and I went into my kitchen and I started playing with formulas and different types of recipes of brownies and cookies that my grandmother made. And I created Think Thin out of my kitchen without even really knowing what I was doing. But through the process, as I started to build my business, I really, I, I, I knew that I wanted to sell my business from day one. I knew that it was important to understand my customers and that customer relationships would be key down the line when I wanted to sell my business. Also, I really wanted to understand the critical key to, un to, to really growing each department in my business. And so I would actually go into each department, build it, and then find the right person to come in and run it. And I think as entrepreneurs, when you're able to take that journey individually, you really are able to understand your business and it then becomes something that grows with sustainability. Well, that makes sense. I'm, of course, hungry now listening to you. It sounds delicious, too. Um, but after two decades, as you said, Lizanne, growing and nurturing Think Thin, what was the spark in your business or your life timeline that started this transition in your head and in your heart toward the exit process? Well, you know, I think from day one, it was very clear that I wanted to build a brand that that my great grandchildren would see in the supermarkets. And, and that was my vision was to grow a brand that could change the way people think about food on the go, portability. And so, you know, really understanding that path, I was able to focus on A, who would I wanna sell the business to? What was happening within the market of protein? How was I educating the consumer because really back then in 1999, people didn't know what protein was about. They didn't understand it. And so there was this process of educating as well as not just the consumers, but I think a lot of the CPGs hadn't yet realized that there was this incredible trend of protein that young or older really needed to have at least 60 to 80 grams of protein in their diet a day. And so for me, 
I understood my target to a certain extent. And I was very guided towards that target in every decision I made. I looked at analytics. I watched what was happening in the market. And, you know, I really prepared myself, I think, mentally that I wasn't going to hold on to this brand for the rest of my life. And that when it was the right time, I would then sell my business or look at opening the door to opportunities. So let's go to that last comment a little bit further, Lizanne. And uh, for everyone else, audience members, you may be in the field, but CPG is consumer products groups. And Lizanne saying they didn't even understand the protein needs that people had. So you were certainly a pioneer there as well, Lizanne. How did you think about finding the right partner to sell to? And then what advice would you give to business owners watching, including sharing the red flags you think they should consider when going through the process that you may have learned? You know, it was such a journey in 2004 when I saw the low carb market <clears throat> growing and expanding. At that point, I thought it was the right time to put my company up for sale. And so I went out to look for a partner. And what I learned through that process was that there are many different types of partners that can come in and help excel your growth. Some want to get their hands in it. Some want to be behind the scenes and help support it. I realized that I, I really wanted to surround myself with a group that understood the food business, understood the growth of where a brand could go outside of an entrepreneur owning it. In other words, I was fearful that after a hundred million that I wouldn't know how to grow my business. I knew I didn't know how to take it internationally. And that was a big part of the growth of the business. So when I went out to look to interview the certain partners that were at the table, A, I wanted to make sure that they understood the category. I wanted to make sure they had success in their pocket already in the similar categories that I was in and that they were a partner, that they didn't want to come in and take it away. They wanted to be additive. That was important to me. And so, you know, you, you really have to do your research and, and understand what do I need? What do they deliver? And how can we become partners of growing this business? And I think that's really you know, the best path of finding the right partner. And that sounds like, Lizanne, it would line up with what you said earlier, which is, you know, your vision and your passion was that your great grandchildren would see this brand in the generations and the legacy to come. So I want to dig a little um, further on that red flags, any red flags of advice that other business owners should consider when they're going through this process? Well, you know, I guess it's go in eyes wide open. Mm. You know, this is, this is, you know, you can hear from many entrepreneurs what they did, but really understanding what you need is probably the most important, being able to articulate it, being able to show the path of, of what your passion is and where you're going, and then surround yourself with the best. Mm. I've always learned, and you know this, Jennifer, because, you know, you're a YPOer, we surround ourselves with the best so that we can a learn mm -hmm. be guided you know hang with your own kind as they say you know we entrepreneurs are, are a rare breed to a certain point you know and and also learn from other people talk and interview and you know i would reach out to my network and ask them how did you feel when you picked a partner how did you feel when you thought about selling your business you know it wasn't easy when it, it's almost like your child is going off to college. For mm -hmm. me, it was my first child. I lived, ate, and drank my company. There wasn't a moment of a day, even when I was cooking or working out, that I didn't have a thought about what could I do better? Who do I want to surround myself with? I was very purposeful in the manifestation, I guess, to a certain point. I believe that if, if, if I was going to put myself up on the market that I would sell. So I think I had this, this vision from the beginning that really helped me take that journey. 
So final question, sort of speed round one question here, Lizanne, what's your biggest lesson that you would advise others to think about when deciding if it's the right time to move on and consider another venture in life? Oh, you know, when is it the best time? You know, it's it's almost like when you say you're two feet in or you're one foot in, right? You know, when you're one foot in and making a decision and you're like, should I, should I not? I knew with two feet in that the market was ready. And I knew that because I was able to understand that consumers could say to me, I need 20 grams of protein in a meal. Now, when I started, they had no idea. I would ask consumers, how much protein do you need in a day? And they would be like, um, I don't know. You know, I, I understood at that point in time that the trend of protein was, was on trend. And there was not much more education that I needed to do but yet the growth of the doors needed to open. And so the the biggest lesson I think that I learned is the mistake I made in 2004 when I almost sold to Hershey's. I wasn't a strategic entrepreneur. I was a task designed Mm. entrepreneur. And what I mean by that is I think there's two types of entrepreneurs. There's the entrepreneur with their head down, charging through it day to day to day, right? And then there's the strategic entrepreneur with their head up, looking at the trends, understanding what's happening in the marketplace. And I grew up in 2004 to be more strategic. From that point, I was able then to really see the trends and where things were going. And so I would say become strategic, understand where your path is at, and you know, proceed forward in the most positive way. That's great advice for entrepreneurs and all business leaders because all leaders are learners too. And you clearly modeled that. So thank you, Lizanne, for allowing us to learn more about your journey. Thank you, Jennifer. So please stay tuned viewers for part two, where we will talk about what life is like after business owners exit their ventures and how Lizanne started her next venture, the Holistic Success Network, supporting the next generation of women business owners. So join us for part two.